Hi friends, it's Dennis here and in this video I'm going to talk about the zeroth law of thermodynamics which is one of the most interesting and fundamental laws in physics and in thermodynamics in particular. So let's begin with the nomenclature of this law which is a little bit interesting in itself because usually when we assign positions we don't begin with zeroth. So why on earth is this called the zeroth law? Well, there's a little bit of interesting history to this. The first, second, and third laws of thermodynamics were actually stated formally before stating what we now call the zeroth law. And it was in the 19th century when physicists realized that it's more important to define what thermal equilibrium and temperature are before talking about all the other three laws. Now, there are two options here at this moment. Physicists could either make this the fourth law, which of course wouldn't be a nice idea because this law is more fundamental than all the other three, so there is need for it to be the first, at least in these laws. The second option was to push all the other laws forward by one and then make this the first law. And probably at this time a lot of literature had been published. It would you know, create a lot of confusion uh, to change all these other books that had been already written. So in the 1930s, Ralph Fowler came up with this phrase of zeroth law, which became widely accepted in the physics and scientific community and hence the zeroth law of thermodynamics. Now let's dig into the law of thermodynamics itself and see what it states. So to put it simply, the zeroth law says if you have three bodies, A, B and C for example, such that A is independently in thermal equilibrium with C and also B is independently in thermal equilibrium with C, then A and B will also be in thermal equilibrium with each other. Now, you may be thinking, well, this is a simple transitive property and it's just obvious, but let me show you that this is not just uh, an obvious uh, statement. With allusion to gas laws, we know that pressure is proportional to volume and volume is proportional to temperature. Now, this would mean that pressure is also proportional to volume. But that's not the case. Instead, pressure is inversely proportional to volume, okay? So this is not just a simple transitive property. It's a wonder in itself that if two bodies are independently in thermal equilibrium with the third body C, then the two bodies will also be in thermal equilibrium with each other. Now, in practice, this third body C is actually a thermometer. And what this zeroth law of thermodynamics really says is that if you get this thermometer and you put it at body A and it gives you a certain reading and then you put it at the other body B and it gives you the same reading, then if you bring the two bodies together, you will still get the same reading, right? So this allows us to create a quantity called temperature, which is a nice way of assigning numerical values that are used to assert that two independent bodies are actually in thermal equilibrium with each other even when they are not brought into contact, which of course has interesting applications. Let's say these two bodies are, you know, separated by a large distance and maybe they are too big to be carried and brought together. We can still establish if the two bodies are in thermal equilibrium by just getting a thermometer, getting a reading of what the temperature of one of these bodies is and also comparing it with the other body. Now, how does this relate to the other laws of thermodynamics and why is it the most fundamental. Well, I'll just make allusion to only the first two laws of thermodynamics, the first and the second. Now, the first law says if I supply heat to a closed system, then this heat is going to increase the internal energy and do work on the surroundings. Now, how do we even define heat energy before talking about temperature? You get the point? Because in order for us to talk about heat, heat is like a form of energy that increases or you know increases the temperature when it's gained and it reduces the temperature when it's lost so we cannot talk about heat appropriately without defining what temperature is also if you look at the second law of thermodynamics which has various formulations but if you look at the Clausius statement which you know kind of states that heat cannot spontaneously flow from a cold body to a hotter body how do you even define hot and cold without talking about temperature? So temperature and thermal equilibrium are very important in defining all that we study about in thermodynamics and that's why the zeroth law is of very much importance in uh, thermodynamics. So in conclusion, the zeroth law says there is a form of energy called heat 
which has a tendency of spreading through a system and there is a variable called temperature which measures this tendency or which tells us how likely it is for this form of energy to spread through a system. So thanks for watching this video. If you find this information helpful, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and do that. Leave for me a comment on what you think about this. I'll see you in my next video. Thanks.